subscribe to LearnCab and hit the bell icon to get notified. Welcome back. Now let's look at what are the other export promotional schemes that we've been talking about. We've already discussed about advanced authorization scheme. That is one export exam, uh, that is one duty exemption scheme that is available. Together with that, we said there is another scheme which is called as duty free import authorization scheme. Now it's the time that we get in detail about duty free import authorization scheme. How is it different from advanced authorization scheme? Both actually goes in together. Reason multiple conditions and all are same. Duty free import authorization is issued to allow the same thing duty free import of inputs. We have already seen with advanced authorization that if I am making an export production, whatever inputs are required for the same can be imported without paying any duty. So that's the same analysis in which duty free import authorization is also framed. In addition, import of oil, catalyst, which is consumed or utilized in the process of production of export may also be allowed. So this is the same thing that we have seen with advanced authorization. Provisions applicable to advanced authorizations are broadly applicable in case of DFI. However, these authorizations shall be issued only for products for which SION have been notified. This is one of the main difference that we have from advanced authorization to DFIA. So DFIA is purely for those products which are mentioned in SION standard input output norms. So those notified product can go for DFIA and they will get some difference compared to the advanced authorization. Goods imported are exempt only from basic customs duty. We have seen in the case of uh, Advanced authorization, you have duties like safeguard duty, anti dubbing duties, and additional duties, even GST and SES are exempted. Those things are not applicable for DFIA. Only BCD, basic customs duty, will be enjoying the exemption. Now, IGST is payable on imports. Now, DFIA shall be issued on post export basis. For product which SION have been notified, which means they will have to apply for DFIA after they do an export. So it's like this: I have I've been exporting, so I can get an authorization for further imports of inputs. Now this is a change. That's this is an amendment that has been brought in. Separate DFIA shall be issued for each SION and each port. There is no, see earlier EDA enabled ports used to have common uh, application for DFIA. Now they said each port, there should be separate DFIA for each SION or each product they will have to apply for separate duty free import authorization. The applicant shall file an online application to regional authority concerned before starting export under DFIA. Export shall be completed within 12 months from the date of online filing of application and generation of file number. So you will have to apply to regional authority. They will generate a file number. You will have to complete export within 12 months. While doing export or supply, applicant shall indicate the number of export, number of this file number on the export documents that you are actually doing this export for the purpose of DFIA. After completion of the export and realization of export proceeds, request for transferable. Again, look at the word here, transferable DFIA. So what we have seen in advanced authorization was not transferable, but after doing the export and after getting the proceeds, you can actually ask for a transferable duty-free import authorization. So this is transferable and may be made to, I'll have to make an application. So what, what is the procedure? First, I'll have to apply to uh, regional authority, do an export, then mention that file number in the export, then with that I will have to look at the realization of export proceeds, with that I will have to apply and get an duty free import authorization from regional authority and it will be, with, will be given within a period of 12 months from the date of export or 6 months 
or additional time allowed by RBI for realization from the date of realization of export proceeds whichever is later so 12 months from the date of export or 6 months from the date of realization whichever is later so regional authority shall issue transferable DFIA with a validity of 12 months from the date of issue which means I can actually give this duty free import authorization to another person and that other person is eligible to go for an duty free import so that's a big advantage so if at all you want a transferable authorization you cannot go for an advanced authorization you'll have to go for a DFIA export proceeds shall be realized in freely convertible currencies except otherwise proceed, uh, specified so it should be in freely convertible currencies there are special cases where they'll consider the, they'll deem Indian rupees to be a, a freely convertible currency other conditions no DFIA shall be issued for an export product where SION prescribes actual user condition for any input now you think of it if there is actual user condition for that particular input you cannot go for an duty free under DFIA what could be the reason if there is actual condition specified the one who has imported has to use it which means if I have got my DFIA from another person transferred another person transferring this DFIA then I am importing this particular goods upon DFIA without paying any duty can I make this actual user condition satisfied because that DFIA is with another person and import has been done using DFIA by another person so since there is transferability so those products which are having actual user condition attached to it cannot be imported under DFIA now can I domestically source the inputs yes holder of DFIA has an option to procure the material or inputs from a native manufacturer or STE in lieu of direct imports but you will have to use an advance release order or invalidation letter back to back letter of credit so they might be obtaining from EOU, EHTP, BTP, STP, SEZ without an ARO or invalidation letter so this has been same as your uh, advance authorization condition I can even obtain domestically but I will have to take another set of documents for the same how can I redeem this particular authorization is the next question it is necessary to establish that inputs actually used in manufacture of export product should only be imported under authorization and inputs actually imported must be used in the export product for redeeming DFIA so the same condition was there in advanced authorization which said I have to establish that inputs are actually used in manufacture of export product and inputs actually imported should be really used so I'll have to establish a connection between these two and it has to be it has to be those inputs which are used for export which are imported under DFI and how do, how will I make an establish uh, how can I establish a connection the name or description of inputs in DFIA must match exactly with the name description endorsed in shipping bill quantity of inputs to be allowed under DFIA shall be in proportion to the quantity of input actually used so DFIA will be as a percentage of your export production so how much is the input that is required for a set of goods which is actually uh, given by SION which will be the uh, which will be the basis on which DFIA will be issued if the goods are imported against advanced authorization but export obligation is not fulfilled then duty or interest will be payable so if you have imported without paying duty but you are not actually exporting it then you will have to pay the duty so the same provision will also be applicable to SEZ and supply made in deemed exports all these conditions are to be satisfied now we had discussed about value addition provision when it comes to advanced authorization we said 15 percent is required whether value addition is required in DFIA yes minimum value addition required to be achieved under DFIA is 20 percent instead of 15 except for physical export for which payment is not received in freely convertible currency then drawback as per rate determined and fixed by customs authority shall be available for duty paid imported or indigenous inputs used for export product which means 
you have two things one is you can actually have uh, uh, duty free import under dfia also if at all you decide to pay duty you have another option that is available that you can actually take the duty under drawback you can take it back so drawback as well as dfia both are permitted now so that is it about uh, dfia then we will have a comparison before that this is the first set of uh, promotional schemes that we had one is duty exemption under that we have studied advanced authorization and uh, duty free import authorization both works in similar manner now we have duty remission schemes which one is mentioned as duty drawback scheme under customs another one is mentioned as uh, refund of inputs under gst so these things we have already discussed in customs as well as gst so our uh, discussion would be just to recap those so duty remission schemes are of two types one is duty drawback schemes another one is the remission of duty under gst so duty drawback schemes export goods exported goods named in all industry duty drawback list i'll have to check that first if it is mentioned in duty drawback list then all industry duty drawback rate is applicable provided that rate covers 80 percent of duties suffered already otherwise you will have to go for a special brand rate so you have an option under uh, duty drawback wherein i have imported certain goods used it in manufacture and then these manufactured goods are exported so you have a like we have SIOIN, you have an all industry duty drawback list and you will have to check out how much is the drawback that is available if it is 80 percentage or above then you take that otherwise you have a special brand rate that will be applicable if it is not mentioned in all industry list then brand rate of duty drawback will be applicable now what is duty remission scheme under gst in gst you do have two options available one is supply under bond or letter of undertaking so you can execute an LUT with the department taking an undertaking that you will be exporting goods with or services with 0% GST wherein you will be eligible for refund of input tax credit or you can pay duty on export and then you can get a refund of the entire amount so ex export without payment of IGST apply for refund of input tax credit that is one method then second one is export of export on payment of igst you will claim a refund of igst paid on export under section 54 both are there so it's like this 100 rupees is my export either i can pay zero percentage on this and if i have made purchase of 50 and paid 9 rupees gst on that i can ask for a refund of it or 100 rupees is my export I can pay 18% IGST on that after adjusting my 9 rupees credit I will pay 9 rupees to the government wherein I will ask for a refund of this entire 18 rupees so effectively my refund will be 9 rupees itself but people go for this IGST payment because they can take the credit of capital goods as well so there are multiple methods in which export is being induced by duty remission one is duty drawback schemes another one is uh, you have duty remission scheme and in section 74 we are talking about entire import is exported without manufacturing something there we have up to 98 percent duty drawback so this is the seven section 75 cases so if you want you can go back to that lecture and then have a recap of that now let's look at a summary of uh, duty free import authorization first one what's the meaning of it again what is that you're getting what is the benefit that you're getting you're getting duty free import of inputs but it is after you satisfy the export condition so inputs which are used in export product can be imported without payment of customs duty only for those products which are mentioned in SION can avail this particular option of duty free import authorization now only BCD is exempted your additional duties and GSTs are payable now what is the validity of it it's 12 months from the date of issue of authorization and it is transferable and he has an option to procure even inputs locally 
and how much is the time limit to obtain uh, your duty free import authorization from your regional authority they'll have to obtain within another 12 months from the export or six months from the date of realization whichever is later and it is issued on a post export basis and duty free import authorization is not allowed where you have actual user condition attached to an SION for any input and who is eligible as usual merchant exporter and manufacturer exporter and a deemed export all of them are eligible for this and what is the condition for redeeming you will have to use that in, uh, input in manufacture of export product and then only it will be available and in uh, actually inputs actually imported must be used in export product for redeeming DFI. Now is there any condition for value addition? Yes, 20% value addition is required. The formula remains the same. Now let's look at what's the difference between advanced authorization and duty free import authorization. What will be the difference? Let's look at the basis. What is it in advanced authorization? What is it in uh, duty free import authorization? Now, can I transfer advanced authorization? The answer is no. You, will not, you cannot transfer the authorization to another person. Actual user condition is attached. DFIA, yes, it is transferable after the export obligation is fulfilled. Where in advanced authorization, after I finish my export authorization, I can actually go for a sale within the country itself. So, what is the value addition that is required? 15% value addition is required on CF value of the imports of inputs in DFIA 20% is required whether whether advanced authorization is available to germ and jewelry sector yes but DFIA is not available to German jewelry sector whether actual user condition is attached to advanced authorization yes advanced authorization will be issued where SION prescribes actual user condition but if SION pres prescribes actual user condition then DFIA cannot be issued because TFIA is transferable, actual user condition cannot be attached to it. Now, SION fixation, is it mandatory for applying for an advanced authorization? No, we have already seen there are four cases in which I can apply SION cases, specific applicant based SION. I can even go for an uh, self-declaration mode or self-ratification scheme. But in case of DFIA, it has to be an, an input which is notified for SION. Now, what about GST and says it is exempted in case of advanced authorization till 31st of March 2020. But DFIA exempt only basic customs duty. There is no exemption for GST that is prescribed. So, this concludes our discussion on first two schemes. One is exemption schemes, which talks about advanced authorization, DFIA. Then, second set of schemes was remission, which we had seen in customs as drawback schemes, and in GST as refund of input schemes. Thank you. Subscribe to LearnCab and hit the bell icon to get notified.